This week on Maker's Digest, we're going to implement the DHT11 and 22 temperature and humidity sensors on the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. All the parts, all the code. Come on in. Welcome back to Maker's Digest. Today we're going to look at sensors. These are the DHT11 and DHT22 temperature and humidity sensors. They're both inexpensive, tiny, and come packaged in a plastic enclosure to protect the individual components inside. They're basically the same package, but have different specs. And when I say basically the same, I mean they operate identically. They can be interchanged, and all you have to do is swap out one line of code. The pins are exactly the same. This one is the DHT11, and this one is the DHT22. They both operate on 3 to 5 volts and consume about 2.5 milliamps at max current. The 11 can sense humidity between 20 and 80 percent with a 5 percent accuracy, while the 22 can sense humidity between 0 and 100 percent with 2 to 5 percent accuracy. On the temperature side, the 11 is good for 0 to 50 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of plus minus 2 degrees, and the 22 is good for negative 40 to 80 degrees Celsius with accuracy of plus minus 0 0.05 degrees. The 11 can be sampled once per second, but the 22 takes a hit on the sample rate for accuracy and can only be sampled once every two seconds. As usual, we're going to connect both of these units to an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. Let's jump over to the workbench and get started. And here we go with the Arduino. These sensors are pretty simple to connect to the Arduino because they pull such a small amount of current, we can use the onboard power. So we only need the three pins that this thing uses. Let's take a look at what pins are what. So if you hold the sensor with the mesh side up or the grid on here, you can see the back is flat. This has the grid side. We're gonna look at, this is pin one, two, three, and four. And pin one is power in, pin two is the digital signal, pin three is unused, not just for this application, but it seems like it's just completely unused, and pin four is ground. What we're going to need to connect this is the sensor itself, a pull-up resistor, and you should use a 10K resistor. And some of you out there probably read these bands and say, hey, that's not a 10K resistor. No, it's not. It's a 3.3K resistor. And the reason I'm using that is I don't have a 10K resistor. 3.3 is going to be fine. It'll work. In fact, these will work without the pull-up resistor, but it's good to have it in there. The last thing that we need are three male-to-male -male jumper wires. Let's get into it. We'll start with the DHT11. So we can connect this to any of the pins here. Bend that back a little bit so you can see it. Take our ground from ground on the Arduino to pin four. Take our power from five volts on the Arduino to pin one on the sensor. Take our signal wire, we're going to run it from digital pin 2 to pin 2 on the sensor. There's no correlation there, I just like using pin 2 on, on the Arduino. And the last thing is to put our pull-up resistor between pin 1 and 2 on the sensor side. Let's get this in there. There it is. Pretty simple. Let's take a look at the code. So as usual, I wrote the code on my time, not on yours. Uh, we're going to go through this line by line briefly, and we'll run the example after that. So first things first, we import the DHT library. That is the Adafruit DHT library that we're going to use, and there's instructions on the Maker's Digest GitHub page on how to install that for Arduino. It's not not hard, but there's just a couple of steps that you have to follow. We're using our DHT pin. We're using pin 2. That's digital pin. We have a delay of 2 seconds. 
2000 milliseconds. Here we define what type of sensor we're going to use. So since this is a DHT11, we have to uncomment that and comment out the DHT22. When we pop the DHT22 in, all we have to do is change that. Here we instantiate the DHT object from the library, set it with our what pin we're on and the type that we're using. In the setup portion, all we have to do is say DHT begin. Down here in our loop, we've got, we introduce our delay of 2000 milliseconds. And a couple of notes here. Uh, you can pass true to DHT read temperature to return the value in Fahrenheit. If you leave that blank or set it to false, it will return in Celsius. Uh, note two, there's a bunch of other functions that the our Adafruit DHT library will do. I'm not going to cover all of them here, but if you go to this page on GitHub, you can look through the source code and find all of the cool other functions and methods that are there. Here's where we read in the actual temperature and humidity. So they're both float. Humidity, we do DHT read humidity. Float temperature equals DHT read temperature true. And then we want to check and see if those have values. As long as this is working, they're both going to return a value. So we can check if humidity or temperature is NAN. If either one of those are true, it's going to give us an error on the serial console and then return. So that return will just kick it back up to the loop. It'll keep going right through here and not get to this point. If this does pass, it's going to continue through the loop and we're going to print out our humidity and temperature. So let's fire it up and see what happens. Blinky blinky on running. And here we go. Usually this first number is a little goofy uh, and then it stables out and starts giving us a more accurate reading. So that was it. Every two seconds it's going to give us a value. This will read once every second. We're just doing it every two, so if you want to change that in the code up here to one second, you can. To swap over to the DHT22, this is very simple. We're going to uh, stop our code here. We're just going to upload a blank sketch so we don't have any output here. And since they have the exact same pinout, this is power, digital, unused, and ground. We can just pull that out, pop this one in, go over here, change the type by commenting out the DHT11 and uncommenting DHT22. Load it up. Load. Blink, blink. Running. And here we go. Again, we get our wonky first value and then stabilizes and we have our other values. And it is a different value because these two temperature sensors and humidity sensors have a different accuracy. So if you remember, this is plus minus 0.5 degrees Celsius on the temperature. So that's why this temperature is dramatically different than the other one. I mean, a couple of degrees is pretty dramatic. So if you remember, this has plus minus of two degrees Celsius. And that's it. Let's move over to the Raspberry Pi. For the Raspberry Pi, it's also a very simple setup and connection as it's only three wires. If you just skipped the Arduino and got right over here to the Raspberry Pi, we'll look at the pins again. If you'd look at the top where the grid is on the back, there's no grid. We're looking at pin one, two, three, and four. Pin one is voltage in, pin two is digital out, Pin 3 is unused, and pin 4 is ground. What we're going to need to connect this to the Raspberry Pi is the sensor itself, a pull-up resistor, and you're going to want to use a 10K resistor. 
this is a 3.3K resistor because I'm out of 10K. It works fine. In fact, you can run this without the pull-up resistor and it'll work. It's just good to have it in there. We also need three male to female jumper wires. Let's get it going. Take the sensor, pop it into your breadboard. I'll bend mine back a little bit so you can see it. We'll take ground off the Raspberry Pi, connect that to pin two, sorry, pin four. It's going into one, two, three, four. Power, we're going to connect it to five volts on the Raspberry Pi into pin one. And our signal, we're going to use GPIO pin 4, which just happens to be the fourth one down on the row furthest from me. And this one will go to pin 2. Our pull-up resistor will go between pin 1 and 2 on the sensor side. There it is. It's that simple. Now let's take a look at the code. As usual, wrote all the code on my time, not yours. We'll go through this briefly line by line so you can see what's happening. We import the sys module, sleep from the time module, and we're using the Adafruit DHT library for this. Uh, in the Maker's Digest GitHub page for this episode, there are instructions on how to install this. There's a couple of different ways you can install it. Take your pick, have the install. It's pretty easy. We're running on pin 4. We have a delay of 2 seconds. And our sensor type is either 22 or 11. And for this one, it is 11. So we're just going to change that out. Down here in our loop, we introduce our delay of two seconds. And this line is where we read the temperature and humidity in. So the method for that is Adafruit underscore DHT dot read underscore retry. And we put in our sensor type and what pen we're working with. This method doesn't have a way to return Fahrenheit. So down here, we're going to do some pretty basic math to do that conversion manually. Here we check to see if the values exist and they're not set to none. So if humidity is not none or temperature is not none, then we're going to print out our values. Elsewise, we will print an error and run through the loop again. So let's run this and see what it looks like. Pseudo Python. Aha. We're getting some wonky numbers here. I wonder why. All right, let's try that again. Apparently, with my keyboard at a weird angle, I didn't save it when we change it to the 11 in there. Aha! Now we're getting something a little more sane. So it's showing 77 degrees Fahrenheit with 41 percent humidity. Oh, 40. Okay. Make a liar out of me. Again, easy to swap out for the DHT22 because we have this exact same pin out. Let's stop this, pull that, pop the 22 back in. Now we'll go in and change this to sensor type of 22. We'll save this correctly this time. and run it again. Uh, 
There we go, we get kind of a wonky reading out of the first one, but it stabilizes. You can see the values are different here, and that's because this sensor is a little more accurate. It's uh, on the humidity side, it's two to five percent ac accuracy, so zero to a hundred percent humidity with plus minus two to five percent. And on the temperature side, it's uh, minus 40 to 80 degrees Celsius plus minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. And so it's a little bit more accurate. We can only pull this one once every two seconds, so that's the cost of being a little bit more accurate. So there you have it. We've got both sensors running on an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. So now you have learned how to do this, go be creative and then share with me what you've made. I want to see it. I can be found on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, all the usual business. And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and ring that little bell so you get notified when we have a new video available. Until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.